Alrighty. Hello, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. The title for this teaching is Whose Salvation? One of the verses that we're going to be looking at is Genesis 49, verse 18. And today is November the 7th. 2024. All right. So let's get here. All right. So now we got that set up. Should be pretty good that way. All right. Hey, come on. Carl says, hey, first on, look at that. That's awesome. Hey, Carl. I hope every, I hope you are doing well. And then our very own Miss Valerie, she says, hello, everyone. Hi, Valerie. I hope you are having a pleasant evening. Thank you both. Hey, you know what? I can do that, too. Right now the computer is is working, so I will at least try to remember to put my reaction on there. Come on, good deal. Carl says that he's doing great. Mr. Steven, Steven chimes in. Hello, hello, hello to all. Hello to you too, Steven. So, Valerie, what are you baking? I'm assuming not treats for me, but... Or for the rest of us. Just throwing that out there. It'd be interesting since uh, D took so much... Uh, you know, she took the month of October off uh, fasting from uh, social media. Um, wonder if she will remember that it's unshakable. You would think, you know, we've been doing this on Thursdays. Ooh, brownie bites. I like brownies. Just throwing that out there. Yum. Okay. You know what? How about we just get started, shall we? We'll see who else is going to chime in here. And uh, we'll go from there. <sighs> Salvation. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Our wonderful D. You know, D, I just commented about, I wonder if D remembers that it's unshakable night tonight. And so D says, good evening to all the beautiful children of God. Well, good evening to you too. And then we'll say hello to our very own Miss Sharon, who watches us on YouTube. And I think just about everybody else, if you want me to say hello to you, you get to comment so then I can acknowledge the fact that you're here because otherwise sometimes I don't see that you're here um, and then there's other times that I see that you're here but since you don't comment I don't say hello to you because I figure you want to just watch so with that anyway let's get into this because you know you would think that the the word salvation in Christianity, you would think that that is a word that is so basic. It is so elementary, very much Christianity 101, um, easy to understand. Everybody gets it. If you're a Christian, you understand salvation because, well, I mean, seriously, that is the whole makeup of Christianity, salvation. 
And yet, some of the discussions that I have had with people, oh, you know what? I'm going to say hello to Michael, as well as hello to Pastor Mark. So, and then we can pray for uh, Stephen, who's uh, across the pond. Um, he's um, got some stuff happening, so um, pray for him. So, anyway. All right, so back to salvation. There's been some comments made to me. Well, no, Todd, I'm not saying that they're not saved, but, and then continue with stuff that, speaks to them not being saved so that's how we started down this path on salvation and understand there's a there's a difference between salvation and saved and we'll get to that at some point not today for sure It'll be it'll be in a upcoming teaching, I'm guessing. So I'm looking at just the word salvation. If my memory serves me correctly, I think it was in the Bible as a whole, like 193 times or something. Um, I started putting verses together, and. This teaching has a front and back lot of verses. And at the most, this teaching, we're only going to look at page one. At the most. When we um, met in person this week, we met on Tuesday and on Wednesday, and neither day we got through even the first page. Uh, we made it about halfway just on the first page. Because it's so, it's, it's interesting. So if I was to ask you, so what is salvation? To, to me who is brand new and you throw out that Christian word salvation and I look you square in the eyeballs and I say, Define salvation. I think some of us would uh, stutter. Some of us would backpedal a little bit. Some of us would just throw all sorts of words in the English language into it and hope that something would actually fit. So, what is salvation? And some of you, oh, come on, Stephen says, I say it's freedom from bondage. I like that. Carl! says united back to God question mark so remember we're looking at salvation Stephen also says hopeless to there's hope okay yes well what I like to, to do is look at what Hebrew word was used for the Old Testament 
that is translated into the word. So in this case, when, when we read salvation, what Hebrew word was put there that they translated salvation, as well as in the New Testament, when we see um, salvation, uh, what Greek word is used. So we've got, what is it? Freedom from bondage, united back to God. You know, Carl, I'm going to read that a few more times. United back to God. I like that. Salvation. That that has this, this sweetness to it. There, there is this good taste that comes from that. Defining salvation is united back to God. Which would be connected with the freedom from bondage. And we have hope now, whereas before we were hopeless. Um, Stephen's in agreement. He's like, yep, you know, the connection to God. So here's what. In the Hebrew and the Greek, when we're seeing that word salvation, not all the time, but a vast, vast, vast majority of times. Here's, come on, D says, not separated from God is how I look, is, is how I took Carl's. United back to God, not separated separated from God is how I took Carl not separated from God salvation being not separated being united back yes I think we're describing the same thing in that yes so now here in the Greek and the Hebrew or the Hebrew and the Greek if you want to go Old Testament the New Testament um and I'm not going to do a real good job of putting reactions on here, except for those that are um, new comments, first-time comments by whoever, if I keep track of that. I will, I will, I try to recognize the first comment that you make, saying hello or whatever. Uh, let's see, Stephen says that Garden of Eden, that was disconnected. See, now we have this salvation. So here, so in the Hebrew of the Greek, what those words are defined when they're translated salvation, those words are deliverance, welfare, prosperity, victory, rescue, safety, preservation, health. So when we look at the, the comments, right, so the, there is freedom from bondage. Oh, let's see, victory, rescue, that fits. Stephen just added lifesaver. Come on. Uh, united back to God. Deliverance. Welfare. Prosperity. Victory. Safety. Preservation. Health. United back to God. Do I have preservation? with being united back to God? Absolutely. Now do I have hope, whereas in before I was hopeless because of salvation? Well, yeah, that works. Oh, come on now, be nice. Let's make sure I can get that. I... Uh, The thing that, no, 
how are we going to do this? Okay. What is it? What is it that we do to be united back with God? What is it that we have that we can say that we're not separated from God? What is it that is, uh, we have this freedom from bondage. Did we break those chains? Did, did we escape? See, here's the thing. We typically look at salvation and we have a, a part in that salvation. We have, we have this, I'm going to do something. Come on, right? D says, Holy Spirit living in us. Yeah, Holy Spirit is given to us as a seal of us in Christ. In the same way that he sealed Noah and his family in the ark. So we have Stephen says, the Spirit... Come on. Let's see the spirit in us, born again, and he's given us the spirit and his righteousness. Oh, without a doubt. Carl says salvation is of the Lord. Absolutely, Carl. And D says a guarantee. Yes, this seal. It's this earnest money that God gives us. Like if you were to buy a house, you put down earnest money and say, I want to buy this house. So let's do this deal. I don't have the finances yet, but I'm working on it. And if I back out of this deal, you get to keep my earnest money. Well, that same understanding of what that means is how God gave us Holy Spirit. So if God backs out of his deal, we still keep Holy Spirit. It's a beautiful thing. All right, uh, let's see. Stephen says, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Come on. Absolutely. It's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. So, salvation. It is, salvation is of the Lord. All right? So, how do we kind of try to unpack that when we put all of these burdens on people and link it to the salvation of God. Oh, let's see here. Carl is in. Let's go to Philippians. So let's go to Philippians, shall we? Let's see. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Philippians 1.28 says, Philippians 1.28 says in no way alarmed by your opponent oh see i was going to use this first my did i okay we'll we'll use it in a different teaching but i'm going to read it this time too because it's such a such, such a good verse such a good verse uh where was it here um Let's see if I back up just a little bit to be able to say. Um, verse 27, beginning that, Carl said 28, and so we, I might uh, read. I'm going to read 27 too. Only conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. So that whether I come to see you or remain absent, I will hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Here we go. Here's verse 28. In no way alarmed by your opponents, which is a sign of destruction for them, 
but of salvation for you. And that too from God. So yes, that's a, it's a the verses that I had on this one. I know I, I, I trimmed it down to, to two pages here. Um, I have five pages worth of verses um, in this, and it is just that that verse, Carl, is a great verse. As long as we understand what salvation is. So deliverance, welfare, prosperity, victory, rescue, safety, preservation, health. Now, oh, look at this. Miss Shelley Fox comes sneaking in here. Holy Spirit is a beautiful thing. Hi, Shelley. Glad you could join us. When I was looking at this, no, all right. If I'm talking to God and I go, okay, God, I am going to use, I, I need to get something. And God says, you can have my credit card and you can use, use my credit card for that. I say, all right, that works. I'm good with that. So then he hands me, right? He hands, he hands me his credit card. So now. I say, God, I thank you for your credit card. And he's already told me I get to use it for whatever I need. I'm going to use it for my living my life. So this is, this is God's credit card. No conditions. He didn't say anything. He said, here you go. So who's salvation? Because I I, I had a grasp of, of salvation. But while I was doing the, the preparation for uh, this teaching, which is going to be, I would say multiple we're going to be on this topic probably for a little bit the first verse that i have with this is in genesis so we're talking this is the first book of the bible genesis 49 it's jacob that is talking and verse uh chapter 49 verse 18 it says this it says for your salvation i wait o lord for your credit card i wait to make this purchase if i do that if i wait for for god so then i can use god's credit card i swipe that bad boy all good do i get the bill no, God does. Could God say, okay, now that you used it, now you have to pay me back plus interest? I wouldn't be all that excited about using his card then. Because I could use my own. Here, Genesis 49, verse 18, says, for your salvation... I wait, O oh Lord. And it rocked me when I read that. Why? Why you ask? Why did it why did it hit me so hard? Well, thank you, Valerie, for, for asking me that. She didn't type it, it was just a thing.
it rocked me because it's his salvation in the same way that for Abraham, the verse, the verse says, and Abraham believed God. And it was credited to him as righteousness. So Abraham believed God and God said, because of your belief in what I am telling you, I am giving you my righteousness for you to have. D says, mine does say, I look for your deliverance, Lord. Fits with what you're saying. Come on. See? And so that's, that is the, um, um, seeing the fact that the Hebrew word that's used there has this, has deliverance as one of the meanings. So when we read salvation, maybe I don't understand deliverance is part of salvation. And so then in D's translation, they, instead of putting salvation, they put deliverance to be able to help us to kind of, kind of get that. If God tells me that I get to have his credit card to use, it's a gift. There is a parallel that I'm attempting to draw with salvation. So I got rocked by this because it says, for your salvation, not my salvation. Jacob is insane. God, I am waiting for salvation that comes through my effort. God, I am waiting for you to finally grade my paper and give me a passing grade so that I can receive some of your benefits. God, I sure hope that I read the question correctly so that my answer fit with what I needed to be able to do and not do in order to have this salvation. It doesn't say any of that. Genesis 49.18 says, for your salvation, I wait, O Lord. So now the salvation that you have should be the Lord's salvation is it i think uh carl had said that the salvation um salvation is of the lord oh easy now is that the salvation that you have do you have the lord's salvation or do you have your salvation that you think the Lord put his stamp of approval on? See the difference? Are you using his credit card? Come on, right? Carl says, I love this truth. Are you using the credit card of God only... Knowing in the back of your mind that at some point, you're still going to have to pay the bill. You're at least going to have to pay some of the interest. The annual fee, something, because you got to have skin in the game.
salvation. Right? Come on, right? Stephen's like, nope. The salvation that you have in your life right now, if you believe that you are a Christian, the salvation that you have, whose is it? Who's not where did it come from necessarily? Because I could take the test. Uh, a, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, A, B, C, D, D, C, B, A, T. I take the test, I put it in, scans it, comes back, gives me a grade. Is my salvation based on the test that I took, which is my life, and I'm waiting for God to look at it and go, eh, you know, it's not the best work. Um, but, you know, I'm a good God. You know, you did help that one person out that one time. Um, you know, I guess I will stamp it with my approval. Is that the salvation that you have? Because if it is, it sucks. If that is your salvation, you do not... Listen to me now. If that is your salvation, you do not have salvation. Stephen says, yep, and then LOL. So, if your salvation is based off of you doing enough things right in your life, answering enough questions the way that the person who wrote the test, the teacher who's going to correct the test, um, in the way you need to answer the questions in the way that the person that's going to grade you is going to grade you favorably, Yes, Stephen wanted to clarify, he's like, our salvation sucks, is what I was laughing at. And yup. <laughs> well, it does. When you compare it to what Jacob is saying in, in Genesis 49, for your salvation... I wait, O oh Lord. Do you want, I mean, how arrogant are you if you're good with having your salvation thinking that God's going to put his stamp of approval on it instead of receiving the Lord's salvation for you. It's a that's what it just blew my mind. And it's only in Genesis 49. There was so many verses with this. And I didn't look at saved. I just pulled up salvation. Crazy good. For your salvation. I wait, O oh Lord, for your deliverance, like D's um, translation has, for your welfare, I wait, for your prosperity in my life, I wait, O oh Lord. For your victory in my life. For your rescue, for your safety, for your uh, preservation. 
for your health, for me. And Stephen says, um, and Jesus says, yo, I'm at the door. <laughs> yo, I am the door. Because better than being at the door, he is the door. Because once we go through the door, now we're in the presence of the Father. And we're not splitting hairs here on, well, Jesus is and... We're not going to do that here. So whose salvation? Jacob says, for your salvation I wait. It's a beautiful, beautiful. And so that's what blew my mind. I'm just like, the salvation that we have isn't ours. Any more than the righteousness that we have isn't ours. The righteousness that I carry is God's righteousness. Doesn't make me God. That's just that's uh, just. But now, not only do I have God's righteousness because He freely gives it to me as a gift, He also gives me His salvation. Now, the thing that kind of messes with your mind, um, what scrambles your brain. I think is one of the things that Valerie says. Something to that effect. God is righteous. But God doesn't need salvation. God gives us his righteousness for us to have ownership of. Not our own righteousness, but it's our righteousness that's his righteousness. Now we also have his salvation. For us. It's not that God needs salvation. He is salvation. He is where we have this deliverance and welfare and prosperity and victory and rescue and safety, preservation, health. All those things are who he is. And he says here. Now let's look at another verse. 2 Samuel 22, verse 36. It says, You have also given me the shield of your salvation. And your help makes me great. One of the people described salvation as they seen it like um, full coverage insurance. <laughs> Come on, Carl. Yes, it's beautiful. <laughs> but yeah, so it's this this umbrella policy that covers everything in our life. Is how they how they. Uh, they seen what salvation is. And this speaks to that. He says, You have also given me, what chapter and verse Stephen says? Uh, Second Samuel, chapter 22, verse 36. 2 Samuel 22, verse 36. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. You're welcome, Stephen. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Now, Would you rather have a shield that you made or one that God made? Which one's going to be better? 
And if you pick anybody other than God, uh, you need to kind of figure things out about you being your own God because now I have this God has also given me. Right? Stephen says, of course, God's. You would think so. You would think that would be like a no-brainer answer. But I'm telling you, man, way too often we walk around in life believing that our shield of salvation is our doing. Do we not? I mean, you randomly poll by just observing. You don't have to ask anybody. All you have to do is watch a Christian in their life. Just like that. Come on, right? Stephen's like, I don't do that anymore. Amen. That's how e it is so easy. All you do is you just pay attention to somebody else that is a Christian and you can pick it out. Their salvation is theirs. What? That's beautiful. Carl says second uh, Samuel 22:21 says that. I love that. Uh, 684. Let's go to 684. 681. 600. And... All right. Second Samuel 22. Verse 21. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the um, cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me. No. Yeah, that's 21. We have to keep in mind Let's see. Stephen says, oh yeah. And then Valerie says, I catch myself doing it now and stop. Amen, Valerie. Isn't that crazy? So it's, it's a beautiful thing to go, oh, wait a minute. Not my shield of salvation. It's God's salvation. It's that his shield. So with that, if I'm reading that verse right, Carl, getting back to that. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me. What's the difference? The NIV says, The Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness, cleanness of my hands. He has rewarded me. Um, 21, The Lord rewarded me for doing right. He compensated me because of my innocence. And in this, we have pre-Jesus. And the law was put into place to say, you need to clean your hands. If you clean your hands, God will bless you. Right. Valerie says, for a long time, I was of the mindset it was up to me to get it done. Absolutely, that is... It doesn't matter if you've been a Christian for uh, three days or 30 years. Unfortunately, that is how it is taught. And it's just wrong. Because now you're walking around with salvation. The foundation of your salvation is you. And it's, you will always fall short. Instead, it's God's 
salvation. His ain't falling short. Just saying, right? Uh, D says rewarded me. So yep, that in hers. Uh, Stephen says, what was it that made me stop? Was in Isaiah when God said, turn to me and you shall have rest. But they went because they gotta uh, find the the fastest horses. That's when I said, y'all go on. I'll sit with God. Come on. Absolutely, right? Stephen says, yep, then Carl. That is why there is so much confusion today, reading old and applying to new. Amen, Carl. That is absolute truth. What we do, unfortunately, is we bring the things of the world, we bring the things of the flesh into the heavenly things. Into, we bring the things of the flesh into the spirit, we bring the things of the world into the heavens and they don't mesh real well at all back in this time remember the people said god i do not want to be in your presence directly because you're scary so we're going to have this gap you just tell us what to do through somebody else and we'll listen to you God's like, no, you really don't want that. I don't want that. But the people are like, nope, that's, yep, nope, yep, that's, bring it, bring it to us that way. So now we have a thousand pages or whatever, you know, 2,000 pages worth of do this, don't do this in order to have God's blessing. And that's not God's plan. God's plan is Adam and Eve before they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The end of chapter 2 in Genesis, it says, they were both naked and unashamed. And then they ate from the tree. God comes into the garden and they hide from him, not because they did the one thing that God told them not to do. That's not why they hid. Go back and read it. Chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. They hid because God asked them, you know, where are you? Ah, oh, Mr. Jeff. Come on. He says, hey, everybody. Wonderful that you are here sharing your wonderful evening with the rest of us at uh, Unshakable. We haven't gotten very far, Jeff. Just throwing that out there. God says, Adam and Eve, where are you? Adam says, well, we're hiding because we are naked. That's his response. God says, where are you? They said, well, we're hiding because we are naked. At the end of chapter 2, it says they were naked and unashamed. So they did not allow their nakedness to dictate their life. Because God was good with how, how they were. O oh Lord, for your salvation I wait. It is your Let's see. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Not my salvation. Come on. Hey, Anthony. Gives me the whole double hand. <laughs> Hang on. Got to put my shorts on. <coughs> From Steven. When we see that our salvation is based on us, it's the wrong salvation. <laughs> yes, we're gonna we're not we're not going there. I, I used it as an example. We're we're coming back into whose salvation? Because Jeff says, can you imagine wearing fig leaves? How itchy! 
I mean, you're not wrong, but... <sighs> when our salvation... Yeah, thank you. Seems like focus. Come on, focus. When our salvation is similar to us taking the test of life and hoping that God will give us a passing grade, well, that's our salvation. Instead, we sit at our desks and he walks by and he says, oh, look at this. This test has your name on it. Here you go. Perfect score. Well done. It's his salvation that we live in. And then the second part of 2 Samuel 22, 36 says, Your help makes me great which came first being great and then god helps you because you're great no god helps you and greatness comes from that it greatness comes through you because god has helped you when you go i am great now god gets to reward me But first, you know, I'm going to give God the honor. I'm going to give God the glory for it. Oh, just please. Right? Jeff likes that with an amen. It is, in this verse, your help makes me great. It He is recognizing the fact that his foundation for life is God, not himself trying to achieve connection with God. And this is Old Testament. All the verses we're going to talk about today, well, that I have wrote down, unless one of you directs us into the New Testament, all of these verses today are Old Testament. We're talking about whose salvation. We typically go through life thinking that it's ours. I think it's a beautiful example to say your life is the test. And you are hoping to answer enough questions right to get God's stamp of approval, which doesn't mean that it's God's salvation. He's just looking at you going, you know what? You kind of suck at this. But I see the effort you put in. Um, I'll, I'll, all right, I, I guess. I'm feeling happy. You know, I'm, I'm in a good mood today. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a passing grade. Right? Just like my salvation couldn't buy an ice cream cone. <laughs> and ice cream cones are good. Jeff, just imagine the ice cream cones in heaven. I mean, think, just go there for a minute. Just go there. Close your eyes unless you're driving. Go into heaven and get an ice cream cone. Taste it. Oh. Man! Eyes roll back your head kind of goodness. But anyway. All right. I have to remember. All right. Come on. See, <laughs> right? <laughs> Just as young, Anthony's like, now I'm going to get ice cream. <laughs> He's like, yummy, I want one. Okay, D. I'm assuming you're not driving as well. Close your eyes and picture it. Shelly, don't close your eyes. Oh, she says, if I close my eyes, it's lights out. Don't close your eyes. We want you staying awake for this. 
Jeff says chocolate with sprinkles. See? Steven, best get licking it because it's dripping. Oh, Valerie has the chocolate chip cookie dough. So, I did, and I had a fresh strawberries on it. See, I love that. Now, Shelly, for you, don't close your eyes, but you can do it as well. It just takes a little bit more focus because you can you can picture something in your mind without closing your eyes. It's just a little more challenging for a lot of people. So, Shelly, you can you you can go there and get that ice cream. And then taste it. Maybe it is some of the best. It is indescribable how good that vanilla ice cream is. For Jeff, you know, it's this chocolate with the sprinkles. D had fresh strawberries on it. So you have this, this heavenly ice cream cone. And all this stemmed from Jeff saying that his salvation could even buy one ice cream cone. But the ice cream that you're tasting is because the salvation that you have is God's. You're using his credit card, not yours. You don't have to worry about paying the bill. You don't have to worry about paying the interest. You don't have to worry about paying the annual fee for it. You don't have to. It's his. Okay. Let's get to a few more verses. I mean, not too bad. We're into it almost an hour, and we've made it through two. <laughs> Come on, Tyler. Hey, man. I'm going to put a laugh here. Tyler. <laughs> Tyler says, I walk away for one minute and I come back to a Dairy Queen commercial. <laughs> Except for the difference is, is that we're going to heaven to get ice cream. Because heavenly ice cream tastes just about indescribable good. All right, Anthony says, thank you for paying. Can you hold that credit card still? don't have the number yet. <laughs> there. Oh, still. I'll hold it still for you. I think you can see it now, right? <laughs> nice. Uh, okay. So, yes. So, so Shelly, yes, you can do the same thing. Because again, remember, we're spiritual beings, just currently physically uh, in a physical body. But anyway, so whose salvation? Is it your salvation that you're living this life in, with, through? Most likely, there's a kind of yes in that, even though it shouldn't be. It should be God's salvation. God's Deliverance, welfare, prosperity, victory, rescue, safety, perseverance, or preservation, sorry, very different words. Preservation, health. Here's another verse. First Chronicles. So again, all of these are in Old Testament. We're not going to make it out of the out of Psalms. So we started in Genesis and it's there's just such goodness here. So where are we at? We're at first Chronicles chapter 16 verse 23. It says sing to the Lord all the earth Proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day. So, I put this one in here because if it is God is giving us instructions on how to build our own salvation... 
here's the ingredients that you need for the proper salvation. You know what? If I build that, if I make that, if I create that, that's going to be my salvation. I can say, yeah, the recipe was okay. You know, I tweaked it here and there. And, you know, it just wasn't, it, it just didn't settle right by using that. So I used this or I cooked it a little bit longer or I used this kind of a pan instead of that. <clears throat> Even if you follow the directions to the T, you're still the one who is putting all the ingredients together. You're still the one that's in charge to make sure that you do everything right. Where is this sing to the Lord all the earth and proclaim good tidings of his salvation from day to day? You go, this recipe is great. And, and, a, lot of, and a lot of Christians go there. They say, oh, look at this. The, the recipe for salvation is wonderful. Here, it says right here, do this. Oh, let's see. All right. Well, now here it says don't do this. And, and here it says don't do this. And uh, you really, really, really shouldn't do that. And uh, don't do this. And, well, you better do this. And, and then here. And then you need to do this three times. And, and this, there's eight measures. Um, figure out what a measure is, and if you're wrong, well, you're way out of luck. And and here, and here, and here, and this is the... No! Is the Bible great? Absolutely. It's not a recipe for our salvation. It helps us and guides us into an understanding of who God is. Who the Father is, who the Son is, who Holy Spirit is. Absolutely. But we live in God's salvation for us. It's not yours. Because if it's yours, it's going to crack. It's going to break. You're going to have to repair it. You really did a crappy job in that part. And so you're always having to keep an eye on that part because... You know, you just didn't put the time into it as you should have. And you know what? Ultimately, you ain't God. So get over yourself. God is saying, here is my salvation for you. I have it for you. Deliverance, welfare, prosperity, victory. Rescue, safety, preservation, health. I have it for you. Your part in that is to believe him. Your part, and you believe him by walking out your life in that acceptance that it is his salvation that is a shield for you. Okay. Here's another one. Second Chronicles. So we were just in First Chronicles. Second Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 17. All oh, this. Oh. Check this one out. You need not fight this battle. Station yourselves. Don't move around. Just stop doing what you're doing. Station yourselves. Stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. 
O Judah and Jerusalem. So that's just the first, that's the first sentence in uh, 17 here. You need not fight in this battle. Are you battling? Are you fighting in a battle today? It doesn't mean that we that we shouldn't fight necessarily. But the first thing we need to do is make sure that our foundation is right. Our thinking is right. Our faith is right. Do you have faith in you more than you have faith in God? If you're truthful with yourself, you're going to say yes. At least a majority of people. Right, Anthony? He's like, oh, man. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17. You need not fight in this battle. Station yourselves. Stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. And what is some uh, definitions of salvation? Victory, rescue, safety, deliverance, welfare. All those fit in this stand and see the salvation, the delivery, the victory, the rescue, the safety of the Lord on your behalf it goes back to that test that he walks by while you're sitting at your desk and he says oh look at this your name is on this test perfect score here you go job well done and not only that but you actually get the information that was on the test that you actually didn't take Stephen says, I fight just by sitting on a lawn chair and watch. It's showtime. <laughs> All right, so now let's go to the second half of this. After we have the foundation, after we're like, he's like, get it in your brain. The salvation for you comes from God. That's where you are living. That's where you should be living. That is for you. Get that. Now here's the second verse, uh, the second sentence in this verse. It says, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out and face them. For the Lord is with you. Hopefully some of you guys, all, all of you, can see, feel, hear, taste, experience, whatever, the, the difference in this. Are you battling for victory? Are you battling for salvation? Are you battling for for a good result? Or do you take this initial step before you enter the battle? Because we're not couch potatoes. Now, most battles we just don't have to fight. We really don't. Typically, we fight them because we want to prove to ourselves and other people that we are as Christian as we want to appear to be. Jesus fought very few battles. Anyway, he says, first, get your foundation right. Stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. 
So, for those of you that have been watching this the whole time, we went and got ice cream in heaven. Stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf, O Judah and Jerusalem. So, today, picture it. Walk through God being with you and experience this battle. Oh, see? Jeff throws in there with homemade fudge. Oh, yes. Chocolate chip cookie dough. Valerie. God says, experience it in the spirit first. And if you're experiencing it, oh, and brownie bites. Heck yes. Valerie comes in with and brownie bites. Yes. Uh, if you're experiencing this battle and you're losing, well, do you really think you should go into battle in the first place? How about you go into battle and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf? Once you get your mind straight, your foundation is on him and that he is for you. He's not against you. He loves you. Because it's not based on your performance. It's based on the performance of Jesus. So if you think that Jesus isn't enough for you, that's a place that you need to go to and kind of figure things out. Because what he did is enough. Well, Todd, but for what? Apply it wherever you want. Is there an area in your life that Jesus isn't enough for? Well, if you think so, well, then that's something else that we can talk about it. Come on, right, Valerie? He, Valerie says, he already fought the battle for you. Absolutely. And I will finish that, that sentence with, and is victorious. For you. Thus salvation being victory. Right? She, she says an amen. So she's in agreement with that. Good. Okay. See this? Isn't this beautiful? Who's salvation? You want to have peace in your life? You want to have joy in your life? Even in the midst of chaos? There you go. Are you living life trying to achieve this salvation from this issue? If we just really zoom in on something in life. Because that's what happens. We have this crazy thing happen. And we want salvation in this. So we do all sorts of stupid things trying to achieve salvation. When God says, first what I want you to do is I want you to see me in that situation. And I want you to see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. Then... Do not fear. Do not be dismayed. Tomorrow, go and face them. For the Lord is with you. Such a beautiful thing. And Stephen says, I'm on the lawn chair. Thanks, Valerie, for them bites. And Jeff, save some fudge for me. Hmm. See? Nummy, nummy. All right. Let's see. Let's, let's hit another. Let's hit a few more verses, shall we? See, I, hopefully you guys are getting this and that you're getting rocked by it like I was. I mean, not including the time that I spent on this, putting this together. So not including that. This is the third time now that I'm going through it. And I just, it just, it, it is so good. Now let's get into the book of Psalms. Psalm chapter 3, and we're not leaving the book. This is, this is where we're going to stay 
for however long I'm going to go on this one, this is it. Psalm chapter 3, verse 8. Psalm chapter 3, verse 8. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be upon your people. Selah. That it doesn't necessarily have to be said, and yet it has to be said, especially here. That word S-E-L-A-H is to pause and take in what was just said. Let simmer on that. Just meditate on that, if you will. It says, the first thing is, salvation belongs to the Lord. So if that's a true statement, and it is, why are you creating your own salvation right come on carl says it rocks me jesus is my rock and salvation come on carl oh yes why because he says so i mean he didn't say that but i just said that but yes salvation belongs to the lord So if you're trying to create your own, aren't you robbing from the Lord to do it? At minimum, you're denying what he has done for you. At minimum. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Salvation, God says, here it is. The next part says, your blessing, so God's blessing, be upon God's people. Now, can you look in the mirror and have you looking back at you, so you look into your own eyes, Can you honestly, truly feel, believe when you say, I am one of God's children? Can you do that? Because that's what he's saying. God's blessing right come on right and anthony has the <laughs> god's blessing be upon god's people come on stephen's like i know without a doubt and that's and that is that is part of christianity at Right? D's like, yes, I can! Exclamation point. And it's this beautiful thing. Carl, yes, I am saved. He saved me. I'm guessing, Carl, in the next, I don't know, probably this month, we're going to get into that word saved. Which is different than salvation. I mean, there's, there's, there's obviously some connection with it, but yes, I agree. Come on, Jeff says, saved by grace. Come on. See, so we have this. It is like, if you can say, I am one of God's kids, not just that 
I am one of his people. I'm in his house. No, that's not good enough. It is, I am a child of God's. Because that connects you family-wise. Because you can be in the house, but you can be a servant. You can be a slave. You don't want that. You might have to do the same job that a slave does or a servant does. But the slave does not stay in the house forever. The child does stay forever. So in Psalm 3, 8, that Selah, that S-E-L-A-H, at the end of that verse says, pause. Right? Come on, right? Stephen's like, come on. Oh. So Psalm 3, 8 says, read it. And then pause. Stephen says, you just quoted Hebrews. All right. I'll take that. But read it and then pause. Let it soak in. Because now if you can say that you are a child of God's, God's blessing be upon you. Because it's not what you do that gets you there. It's not what you've done that gets you there or kicks you out. It's your belief in what he has done that opens up that door for you. All right. Stephen says Hebrews 3. Let's go into Hebrews. Hebrews Two, Hebrews 3, 5 and 6. Uh, duh. Now Moses was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken later. But Christ was faithful as a son over his house, whose house we are, if we hold fast our confidence and the boast of our hope firm until the end. Amen. All right. Bam, as Stephen says. All right. Let's hit, uh, just, uh, where are we at? Okay, we're not doing too bad. Uh, so we've let that kind of pause. Salvation belongs to the Lord, and he gives it to us. I get to have that. This salvation belongs, my salvation belongs to the Lord. You want to try taking my salvation from me you gotta go talk to god about it because he was the one that gave it to me only he's the one he's the only one that can take it from me all right jeff says being a child of god means we shall follow jesus's footsteps and his lead in dealing with and living under the umbrella of grace Yes, as long as we don't follow in his footsteps of living under the law. Because Jesus lived under the law, so we would not have to. Because the law was given as a tutor until the fulfillment of time, which is what Jesus did when he came. Now... We no longer need a tutor, which is the law. Now Jesus' life says, believe and love.
There you go. Because obviously, I mean, we're, we might as well chase this rabbit. Then we'll shoot it and we'll get back on track. Obviously, the law as we understand it has some wiggle room in it. Right? <laughs> Steven liked that. <laughs> you go, absolutely not, Todd. There's no way. Which number is it that says thou shalt not kill? Whatever number it is out of the Ten Commandments. It's one of them. Right? Jeff says, Jesus came to forgive the law and the people because God made it very difficult to live in the law without sin at all. The people asked for the law. So God gave it to them to show them that what they really want they can have without following the law, it is through relationship with him. Now it's no longer based on our performance, but it's based on our belief in his performance for us. So let's chase this rabbit. So whatever the law, whatever the Ten Commandments is, whichever one that says thou shall not kill, obviously there's some wiggle room in there. And I say obviously because what did God tell a group of people through the prophet in the Old Testament? I'm pretty sure he said, all right, people, here's what I want you to do. See that clan of people? See that nation of people right over there? Yeah, I want you to go kill them. I want you to kill everybody and everything. Men, women, children, pets, livestock. <clears throat> I want all of it wiped off the face of the earth. So obviously, the commandment of thou shalt not kill you know we got to kind of put it into a better understanding than what we have because i think i haven't i haven't looked at this but i would uh think i'd be standing on some pretty solid ground that i could probably find examples of the contradiction to every one of the commandments that God directed to be done. Not sure, but I I have a level of confidence that says that, that it's there in there somewhere. Right? Jeff says God directed many through war on his behalf. Yep. And so so our life today is not all that being said, it's our life today is not about the Mosaic law, it's about the law of freedom. It's about the law of life in Christ. We don't have to worry about anything other than our belief that we have God's salvation, that we have God's righteousness, not based on our efforts as though it were a payment for services rendered because i'm telling you what we suck at even doing that but i'm telling you right d says amen that is where life is when we can live this life with this understanding and we can do it <clears throat> don't cop out on me and go well that's just never gonna happen i was just talking to somebody the other day well you know it's nice to say but you know what you can't really achieve that. You know what? Knock that off, because yes, you can. I believe that it can happen because God said it can. So we need to change our belief in the fact that this actually can. We actually can have this kind of salvation, this deliverance, this welfare, this prosperity, this victory, this life that... Is we have this rescue, this safety, this preservation, this health, all just through salvation. We're not even talking about righteousness or anything else, any of the other beautiful, wonderful free gifts that God gives us. 
Right now we're just talking about salvation, not even being saved. We're not talking about being saved. We're talking about salvation. <clears throat> okay. Psalm 13, verse 5. It says, but I have trusted in your, God's, loving kindness. My heart shall rejoice in your, God's, salvation. When we can trust that God is a God of loving kindness... You think about this loving kindness. What that means, all sorts of stuff. We can we could go down that road. We're not going to. But think about a person who you could even semi kinda say that you could describe them as having loving kindness. Now, from them, they have salvation. That would be really, really good. Right? Your heart would rejoice in the welfare, the prosperity, the victory, the rescue, the safety that would come from somebody that you trust has loving kindness. If that's how you describe them, that you trust that that is who they are. You don't question it. You don't second guess it. You're not like on the fence. Well, you know, I hope they are. I've, I've heard good things, but you know, I'm just not sure if in this situation or that. No. It is, you know, it's just solid ground you're standing on that that is the case. It doesn't matter if some other person comes in and goes, well, yeah, but did you hear blah, blah, blah. And if that were to happen, that isn't going to change your opinion about this person. Okay. It's that kind of a strong foundation. And then from that, he says, my heart shall rejoice in God's salvation. I know God's loving kindness, and from that, from his loving kindness, flows God's salvation. I get it. Come on, right? Carl says, loving kindness can only come from the Spirit when you are saved. I agree, because otherwise it is control and manipulation. A worldly experience, if you will, of loving kindness. A copycat, a worldly copycat of the beautiful things that are in heaven. Okay. And I hit a couple, well, I'd like to hit a, several more verses here, but we'll see. We'll see. Where are we at on time? Whew. Let's see. Psalm 27. Verse 1 says, the Lord, so, sorry, Stephen, let's see. Um, oh, before I get there, Jeff says, isn't that part of the fruits of the Spirit? Uh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. might be another one hope uh loving kindness i mean that is temperance that you use the niv jeff jeff said temperance um i think that's patience but anyway the short answer would be 
yeah, it would be the fruit of the spirit, similar to what Carl is saying, is that you you have that through Holy Spirit. Or the NLT. Nice. Nice. Or NLT. Okay. And IV. That. All right. Yep. So the NIV or the NLT. Okay. All right. So here. So let's go to Psalm 27, verse 1. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? Now, I don't know about you all, but Psalm 27, 1... is a good verse to have. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. The Lord is the defense of my life. I know you can say it. Jeff says absolutely. I know you can say it, but do you believe it? And you can even say, yes, Todd, I believe it. But I'm telling you right now, if I follow you around in life, does your life reflect your answer, your words? Because if that's a no, then you don't actually believe it. I know it's a hard pill to swallow. And I'm not talking to Jeff here. I'm talking to everybody here. Whoever's going to listen to this, watch this. You can say, absolutely. Yes, I can agree with that. I'm all in. <clears throat> the Lord is my light. Absolutely. The Lord is my salvation. I'm all in. I'm 100%. Yes. The Lord is the defense of my life. Uh, absolutely, as long as you don't look too deep into it. Then you don't really believe it. See, Jeff says, well, our brains are deceiving, and we can say we have no fear, but... See, and that's the beautiful thing about Christianity is that we're still, I'll say allowed, emotions and feelings. That doesn't, I can, I can have fear, but not live in fear. Because fear is an emotion, right? An emotion, a feeling, whatever. Fear is something that God gave us, so I can experience that in my life. But that's not what this is talking about, about whom shall I fear, you know, whom shall I dread. It is this, when I fear, when I dread, those are the things that are dictating my actions in life. And he says, don't do that. Instead, and you won't, not only don't, but he says you won't fear or dread when you have me as your foundation. The Lord is my light and my foundation. So whom shall I fear? So now when something happens, it can startle me. It can, it can strike fear in me for this moment, but that's irrelevant because I understand whose I am. I understand that the Lord is my light and my salvation. And what does salvation mean? Victory, rescue, safety. So when I have that as not my salvation that I've created, but 
God's salvation that I get to have ownership of. Well then who whom should I who who shall I fear then? I can be afraid of a situation that I'm in, but that doesn't mean that I have fear and allow that situation to dictate my life. My action comes from who my Lord is, who I believe in. See, typically we believe in ourselves in living this life more than we believe in God's ability or want to interact in our life on our behalf. You can say you believe God, and it's a true statement. But when you get down to it, you believe God is all that he says he is, but you also have a hard time accepting that, like it said in Second Chronicles, um, stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. doesn't mean you're lazy it means that you're still living life but now you are walking through life so you have action you have words your life that you're living is your belief in God's salvation is a shield in your life is what you have or is your salvation something that you're still trying to work on and work through and build up and create and and fix the cracks and repair the damage and because God's not giving you his salvation and it's one that got rejected from the plant that you know what just really wasn't up to standard but you know what it's only you so here have have this one no it's his that you get to have. So then from that, our brain goes, well, yeah, but. And we go, okay, let's see. Does that line up? Does that thinking line up with what God says? Well, it doesn't. All right, well, then it doesn't carry the weight. It doesn't get to have the value that God's word says. Because this is what God's word says. That the Lord is my light and my salvation, and that the Lord is the defense of my life. When you live your life, do you live it that the Lord is the defense? of your life. Does God defend you? Well, not when I do something stupid. Why would he defend me? Is that what it says? The Lord only defends you when you need no defense. No, the only reason he has to defend you is because you're stupid. Because you do stupid things. Just saying. I mean, I... why would he defend me if I was right? I would need no defense. And yet, he's my defender. The Lord is the defense of my life. Goes back to grace. Okay. Such good stuff. Hopefully you guys are getting stuff out of this. Oh, let's see. Psalm chapter 40 verse 10 come on i love it carl says what god says he does chss because he said so Oof. his word doesn't come back void believe it 
C C. I don't remember what C C stands for. Seems like you told me before, but my brain's not uh, pulling it up. But that's it. The thing that we all we we fail miserably at is believing that if God says it, God is also able to fulfill it. Oh, typo. Okay. So just believe it. So, right? His word doesn't come back void. Believe it. So there. And I do think, Carl, that if you went into your comment, I think if you right-click on it, if you're on a computer... I think you can edit it or just click on it on your on your phone or tablet. I think it will bring up a, a menu that says, do you want to edit your comment? Not positive, but anyway. <clears throat> Let's see. See, there's such good stuff in here. How about Psalm chapter 40, verse 10? Psalm 40, verse 10 says, I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great congregation. So from all of mankind. <clears throat> I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. So I have not received your righteousness. And then after I've, I have an understanding of it. I still am not sharing it with, with other people. I'm just keeping it just for myself. I'm not saying, well, you know what? If I have his righteousness, you can have his righteousness too because we're all screwed up in one way or another. So if I can have his righteousness, you definitely can. I have not hidden God's righteousness within my heart. I have spoken of God's faithfulness and God's salvation. I have not concealed God's loving kindness and God's truth from all people. Psalm 40, verse 10, that's just, that's a good verse right there. How about verse 16? So Psalm chapter 40, verse 16. says, let all who seek you, God, Rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say continually, the Lord be magnified. I like this one because if my salvation that I lived with had anything to do with me, why, what air, What screwed up thinking would I have to magnify the Lord for the salvation that I have? Now, understand, some people do this. I'll say many of them do this subconsciously. Because they are their own God and when they are talking about God be magnified and God you are good, they're really speaking about themselves. And it's just really messed up. And yet you come across it. I would say most churches you go to, you will, you can find, not that you should go looking for these people, but you can find people that have that. 
because I'm telling you right. Right, the facades is what Stephen says. But think about it. We have those that commented here. I was living with my own salvation, but I'm getting better at not. I did it. But thankfully now I understand a better way, which is just receiving his. So it's out there and we don't have guilt, shame, and condemnation for those that have that. Because that's not how we help them improve their life. How we help other people improve their life is by living in this freedom that we have in Christianity which draws people because that's what they really want. They want the promises of God, even if they don't connect that. That's what they want. And we get it freely through our belief, through our faith, that what Jesus did is enough for us to have this in our life. We get to have God's salvation. Not based on the stuff that we have done. Because when it's based on the stuff that we have done, the best we can come up with a salvation is a salvation that's ours. That we hope that someday God will put his stamp of approval and say, I'll give you a passing grade because I'm in a good mood today. Which he isn't doing. We can go to the banquet hall where all of the people in town filled the banquet hall i love it it says the good people and the evil people the bad people he says i want everybody in here and it's packed and everybody is wearing jesus everybody is wearing the wedding clothes except one one has his test paper and he writes in there, he changes the F into an A. And then, you know, for good measure, he adds the plus. And the father comes walking by and he says, how'd you get in here? And then kicks him out. So nobody is getting into heaven based on the test score of life on themselves. Everybody who believes that what Jesus did is enough for them will be there. Okay, what are we going to do? You know what, I think, I think we're going to be done. I mean, it's a lot to take in. Um, we'll see what other verses um, we get to next week. More than likely, I'm going to take page two and uh, probably do page two next week. So we'll see. Jeff says, I have to go. Good night, everyone. Much love. Happy deer hunting. Happy and safe deer hunting to you as well. Mr. Gordy chimes in with freedom. So... I'm going to say that uh, whose salvation do you have? Hopefully, it is the Lord's salvation, and it's not something that you created yourself. So hopefully, this has been a teaching that you've been able to uh, grab a hold of and apply it to your life. Hopefully, with uh, um, all of this you've been encouraged I've been encouraged by you so thank you come on right D says uh, excellent teaching about the Lord's salvation thank you thank you thank you come on Carl has a bowl of fruit and says love you all 
I love it. Thank you guys. Um, I am greatly encouraged by you. And hopefully this teaching is an encouragement. And he says, good night. I love you all. Tyler says, amen. Selah. Glory. Come on. Those are three powerful words. Woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo, ice cream. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Wonderful. Steven says, thank you. Uh, Jeff was the one that said ice cream. <clears throat> All right, everyone. So with that, I want to say thank you. And uh, let's see. You know what? Let's do this again next week, shall we? All right, everyone. Bye for now.